Hi, I'm Bob, and this is Light Night Dial, and this is my return receipt on Sod Ikea Obergrandad, and this is my return receipt. So I thought I would come at you uh, in my car today, since I do my best hi-fi thinking while I'm driving. I want to talk a little bit about and comment a little more on my experience with the IKEA turntable, my review, the unboxing. Also wanted to take this opportunity to thank the cheap audio man Randy for uh, for sharing my review with his viewers. Uh, it's not something I asked him to do. I was delighted when he did share it, and that's just the kind of guy he is. He's a, a prince among men, and he's a leader in this space. I say this space like I'm in it. I, I'm a part-timer, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm doing what I can. <laughs> so, a couple thoughts I had. First of all, I stand by everything I said in that review, uh, and I did return just on my way back from Ikea, I did return the two turntables. It's just too plastic to me, too lightweight, no paths to upgrade. The platter was also plastic and wobbly, and, and no matter how hard I tried with acrylic platters, record weights, in fact, the record weight actually kind of altered the speed a little bit, uh, I couldn't make that work. Now, listen, I have turntables. That was never going to be any kind of primary turntable for me. I have a nice, you know, what I would consider a reference turntable, at least for me, and, an, and a second one, a second nice turntable in my office. This was simply to review something that was new on the day that it was released, and so I rushed out a video and, you know, rushed out some opinions. But I do stand by all those opinions. There, there, is, a, there is a good deal of motor noise. The Audio-Technica cartridge, though, it um, sounded pretty good. Uh, jumped the rails a couple times. And I attribute that probably to the wobble of the turntable platter. So all that stuff and more, you know, was true. And I decided to take the both turntables back you know if it had been a little a little nicer or been a little more curious about the product I would have kept one of them as a historic artifact but uh, I get returned the two tables I thought well you know what I'll, I'll walk through the store again and go to where it was displayed see what's up and see how they were moving well I missed I missed the display the first time going through the store. So I had to backtrack from the kitchen back into the lifestyle or the living area. And there it was. There was the display that I'd seen Saturday. Now, I didn't take a, a really a good look at the display on Saturday. I just grabbed two boxes and ran as they were unpacking the pallets. But uh, the first thing I noticed was that there were none for sale. The Obergrassan is, uh, or Obergrassan, uh, Ober, 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 sold out probably within hours, if not minutes, on Saturday. There was a sign that said temporarily out of stock. They had the demo unit there, but it was kind of shoved against the wall in a corner, and it looked like a thousand people had manhandled it. And the tone arm and the stylus were resting on the uh, label of a dusty, heavily scratched record, and. There was already a layer of dust on the on the demo model. So it was just kind of sad. I kind of got emotional because I had a little bit of FOMO when I dropped both of the units off and then I saw that they were sold out. Like maybe I should have kept one for posterity. But that was quickly overcome when I examined that, that demo model. And it, I got depressed and sad because Somehow, Ikea had reduced the hobby that we all love, the hobby that we spend a lot of time and money researching and pairing equipment and buying equipment, kind of reduced it to crap. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what other word to say. It was kind of offensive, and I was, 
I was kind of taken back. Regardless of how the turntable was constructed, the plasticity and the, you know, the poor components and everything, um, just to see our hobby reduced to that state was mind blowing to me. And I don't know, it just, it just kind of, it just kind of brought me down a little bit. It also made me grateful for the equipment that I do have and the equipment that is available out there at a reasonable, reasonable price. But, um, so I was kind of walking through Ikea dejected, kind of, kind of glad I'd reviewed it, kind of glad I returned it, but also sad that, uh, you know, our hobby has been reduced to this. So I was driving just a minute ago and I was thinking, you know what, this turntable is not aimed at me. I mean, it never was. I never intended it to, have, to be a primary piece of equipment in my, in my chain, but it never was intended for me in the first place or probably for you. I thought from the pictures and from the price tag that maybe it was gonna have some secret sauce or magic sauce uh, because, hey, we all as Americans like underpriced stuff that overperforms. Uh, so I had hopes that maybe it was something that would be fun to play around with, but it just wasn't. And um, I started started thinking, you know, I got to take this for for what it's worth. This is aimed at children, I guess, or parents who give gifts to children. I I can imagine. On, on Christmas Day this year, there'll be a 10-year-old boy or girl that will unwrap this along with a handful of dollar bin records, you know, probably classic rock that their parents like. And uh, they'll probably be super happy. And they'll make a lot of noise. And, and that's a good thing. That That is the gateway, that is the portal to our hobby and you know I think all of us agree the more the merrier in our hobby and so you know what if that if that gets kids in the game I'm good with it uh, what I'm not good with are I guess parents that don't maybe do the research because for the price of a few more happy meals um, you can actually get close to a, a good turntable take hundred and fifty nine dollars like I said and add a few extra bucks and, and you're in fluence territory or whatever other budget tables um, have decent tone arms and de decent drive systems uh, and cartridges so I don't want to say shame on the parents they don't know any better but hey if this gets kids in the game it gets them in the game and it, it, it wasn't aimed at my demographic and <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you another thing that wasn't <laughs> aimed at my demographic. Uh, the Harry Styles concert I saw the other night. <laughs> I took my wife to uh, to see Harry Styles. It was a, a birthday present. I bought tickets. And I, listen, I, I like some of his songs. His, his recordings are, are pretty decent. But, you know, uh, I've been fortunate enough in my life to see Bowie, to see Springsteen, James Brown, Peter Wolf, and the Jay Giles Band. What are the other great front men of the world, you know? And... Um, Harry did not connect emotionally with me. He just didn't. I mean, he's a good enough performer. The songs are good, but the concert really didn't tell a story. There was no highs and lows. It didn't build. It didn't, you know. Again, it wasn't aimed at me. Just like the IKEA Obergesand. Oh, pick it up. There you go. Nailed it. Didn't speak to me. It's not supposed to speak to me. It's probably not supposed to speak to you. If you've bought one, you've probably already returned it. I am only hoping that the two that I've thrown back get picked up by some young person or some kid that has never had a turntable before. And again, we'll get them interested in this hobby that we love so much. All right, so that's, that's my take. Uh, I'm not I'm not coming at IKEA. I'm not throwing shade. They do a lot of things right. Their meatballs are fantastic. The Kallax uh, shelving system 
that they have is an audio file staple. As you know, you probably own some of those. Uh, so again, no offense to them. I'm sure there's a, some deal of engineering that ha has gone into it. Uh, the platter is a mystery to me. That's my phone. But it is what it is, and I had fun doing the review. Thanks again to Randy for sharing. Uh, all I can say is Andrew, Mike, Mike, Kevin, Steve, Darko. <laughs> if you guys would follow suit, that would be awesome. <laughs> Uh, I'd love to be in your space, uh, but thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you the next time on Light Night Dial. Oh, pick it and stud. Oh, pick it and stud. Oh, pick it and stud.